Hi, welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us. I'm Lisa Lang, co-coordinator of Rethink, Winnebago's Healthy Living Partnership, a program of the Winnebago County Health Department. And we hope that you um, stuck with us and saw the prevention shtick, if you will, which was just a piece of what our community leaders and um, members are up against in prevention, some of the social norms that we hear. And so while it can be doom and gloom, sometimes we hope to make some, some progress and eventually improve the quality of life. And so that's why we're here today. Thanks for being here with us, Jason Thank Weber. You. Town of Menasha Police Department, a friend of Rethink. Tell us a little bit about yourself, how long you've been in law enforcement. Well, I've been in law enforcement the past 22 years, uh, a little over 20 years at the Town of Menasha Police Department. I also serve as the chair of the uh, Drug Prevention Committee for Rethink, and um, I'm also on the board of directors for the Wisconsin Crime Prevention Practitioners Association. Excellent, and we, we've been able to make huge strides because of your lead with this whole prescription drug uh, campaign. So oh, we're, we're, we're better off for it. So let's talk a little bit, I know recently there was a press conference with police chiefs, the sheriffs in the corner were there really addressing an urgent issue around drug abuse and the consequences. Tell us what, what's happening with that. Well, one thing that we need to do, you know, you, you heard the coroner speak um, earlier here about the alarming stats of the um, increase in the deaths and the overdoses, and even the uses of, of Narcan, you know, which, which the death rate would have been a lot higher had it wasn't, you know, for the use of, of that. I think, you know, the thing that needs to be done is we need to raise the awareness or the attention level to this problem. You know, us in law enforcement, us in the prevention field, when we saw these statistics and these increase in deaths, it was alarming to us, you know, and we felt that, you know, if it's alarming to us, it, it has to be shocking to the rest of the community. And that's why we ended up calling the press conference was really to do that, to raise attention and awareness to it. Right. And could anything be done to prevent heroin use? Well, heroin, you know, when, when you talk about heroin, that's kind of the granddaddy or the end result of drug use, people typically don't start out on heroin abuse. They start out with the gateway drugs, with alcohol, marijuana, you know, work their way up to the prescription drugs, you know, maybe some cocaine and stuff though. But when you get to heroin, that's kind of at the end of the spectrum. So there really, there really isn't any prevention program that, that is geared strictly towards heroin use. That's why we need to really reflect on um, you know, our prevention efforts with those gateway drugs, with the marijuana, uh, the cocaine, and the prescription drugs. Right. I mean, I think I always talk about the drug drop box that we have because that people don't think that it would reduce heroin use, but essentially cleaning out the medicine cabinet and removing those um, old or expired meds in the county's drug drop boxes could prevent a lot more. We're looking here at the good drugs gone bad slide, but I just want to um, let people know, go to the drug box. Cross out your name with a black Sharpie marker and you can find a drug drop box at the Oshkosh Police Department and the Nina Police Department. Very easy to use. Um, so that's one way that anyone can help. And, you know, all the partnerships that we have with schools and police, you know, officers and, and some of that Crime Stopper promotion too. Those are all things that can tick away and try to reduce heroin. Um, but specifically, when we're talking about heroin and we've talked about the gateway, how do they ever make that jump, Jason? When people are starting to use and starting to use, how do they make that jump to begin using heroin? Well, they make that jump, you know, when you look at heroin, heroin comes from the opiate family. And when you bring that down to prescription drugs, uh, a majority of the pain pills, the hydrocodone, the oxycodone, those types of pills, you know, and the brand names that are associated with that, those all come from the opiate family. So it is the same family. Um, the pharmaceutical industry has started to catch up and has started to work towards, you know, combating this uh, prescription drug abuse. So they have made some changes and, and, and really some great strides so that their uh, product isn't easily as abusable as it was in, in the past. So what we are seeing now is either people are taking copious amounts of this prescription drugs or they're just making that jump to okay. heroin. So it's this change with the the design of the pharmaceuticals has pushed people other places to get the same high for cheaper. Right. The um, what the pharmaceutical pharmaceutical companies have done is um, most of these pain pills are time released. You know, if you notice when you go to the doctor and you get a prescription for hydrocodone, oxycodone, it, it will tell you that 
you need to um, you know only take so many in, okay. in a day not to exceed so many you know, in, in certain uh, hours and the reason for that is that it is time released uh, what people were doing to abuse that is they would cut these pills in half they would um, crush them they would do stuff to alter that time release so that they get the full blast or full effect all at once. Well, the pharmaceutical companies have kind of caught on to that and have kind of reformulated the way that they make those hmm. those pills so that you can't alter that time release mechanism, which is really great when it comes to prescription drug abuse. But the unintended consequence, or unfortunately here, we're seeing people make that jump to, to heroin. Okay. Wow. That, that makes it easy for us to understand. Um, let's talk about good drugs gone bad. And I know this is that prevention campaign that came up um, and you were the starts of it. And tell us, take us back to the origin of it and about, you know, the progress. Well, it started back in 2009. My community, the town of Menasha, we saw six homes that were broken into in a span of 10 days. And the only thing taken was prescription drugs. Hmm. So initially it started out with a group of crime prevention officers in Northeast Wisconsin to start looking at that, to combat that from more of a crime prevention effort than from a drug prevention effort. Um, once we started digging into it and realized that, you know, prescription drugs was kind of our root cause or our core or, or our common denominator in all of these, these crimes, we started to look more into the prescription drug abuse, realized what a big problem that was, and that those those four crime prevention officers soon expanded to you know members from rethink uh, pharmacists we had uh, parents that uh, whose kids were battling uh, prescription drug abuse we had juvenile workers we really kind of opened up the door and had all of these um, stakeholders or people that have been affected or have a claim in this problem came together to figure out what we were going to do um, at the time, prescription drug abuse was kind of unheard of. Um, and it really is a little bit to the, this point. You know, typically when people think of drug abuse, they don't think of prescription drugs. You know, they think of marijuana, heroin, cocaine, those types of um, stuff. They really don't think about the prescription drugs. So we thought our group was at, again, you know, going back to what we did with the heroin thing is we needed to raise awareness. We needed to raise attention to this problem. Mm -hmm. And we needed to educate the people. So we ended up getting all, you know, all the groups to, together. We um, came up with some presentations and uh, PowerPoints and videos and a lot of materials. And we broke that down into who our target audiences were. And our target, target audiences in this program is uh, youth, the parents, the older adults, and uh, the healthcare workers, the doctors, the pharmacists, the sure. clinical nurses, you know, those people who are involved in it. Um, we, through some grants and through some work and stuff, we were able to, to get a lot of material together and put them on a toolkit. And initially, it was just for the Fox Valley and just for Northeast Wisconsin. Never in, in, in my wildest dreams mm -hmm. did I imagine that, that this program would get the attention that it has. Um, since the development of this kit in 2009, we uh, were recognized by SAMHSA. Uh, we were recently endorsed by the um, State Council on Alcohol and Other Drug Abuse as the recommended uh, prescription drug prevention program in the state. And we've disseminated about 500 toolkits. Uh, we do train the trainers across the, the state, uh, just as uh, we just recently uh, did one this morning, actually, you know, and we plan on doing a few more here as we get into summer. Yeah, I think that people are responding to it because it's ready-made presentations. People don't have to go out and do the work and the research. It's ready. Anyone can present to any group and raise awareness and, and really push that drug drop box, cleaning out your pills, and, and it's kind of win-win. Exactly. Tell us just briefly, we have about a minute left, but tell us about the designer drugs that we're hearing about. What should parents be aware of? Well, that's really the new drug threat or the new drug thing that we really need to be aware of. There's a lot of different designer drugs out there, but the one that, that we're seeing a lot popping up here in Winnebago County is something that's called synthetic cannabinoids or sometimes it's called spice or k2 essentially what it is is it is a product that looks similar to mar marijuana green leafy substance that is sprayed with a mixture of chemicals and people end up smoking it and it gives a high that um, is typically you know 20 to 100 times higher mm. than the high that marijuana 
uh, gives. The, um, the scary part of this is these chemicals, nobody really knows anything about these chemicals and, and research has shown that a lot of this product does contain acetone. So a lot of our kids and, you know, not only kids, but young adults and stuff are smoking this stuff when really nobody has no clue what it is. Wow. Very concerning. So thanks for keeping us abreast of that. If, if community members want to stay abreast and hear more information, you can like us on Facebook, Rethink Winnebago. Also, Jason's website for the um, Good Drugs Gone Bad is at gooddrugsgonebad.org. Dot com. Dot com. Gooddrugsgonebad.com. And also you'll see here a slide of the community partners that came together to create and collaborate for the presentations. Um, so this, this has been a huge feat. So thank you, Jason. Thank you. For sharing information on that. And with that, we just would like to summarize um, by thanking in Winnebago's County Coroner, Barry Busby, Jason Weber, Town of Menasha, and the entire Rethink Drug Prevention Committee. They have a battle um, here, and we're working closely with the MEG unit and community partners to reduce drugs and alcohol and other substances while promoting healthy living at the same time. So the way that you can help is use the drug drop boxes. Please clean out your medicine cabinets, remove old pills, create a family value that you do not share pills for any reason, and then our youth are going to grow up understanding that it's not okay to share pills as well. So with that, I would like to um, thank you for watching today and ask you to check out RethinkWinnebago.org, like us on Facebook, or please call Winnebago County Health Department, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have, 232-3000. And just remember, we can always rethink.